Hello and welcome back to Simon's Rants. I'm Simon and today I'm going to be giving my second thought on Inception. So if you haven't seen this movie yet, uh, stop watching now. This is your spoiler warning. I'm going to be going over the entirety of this plot and going in depth and you guys should just watch it anyway. So go ahead and watch it and then come back and we'll talk about it. So Inception, ah man. Inception for the longest time was my favorite movie. Um, it's still up there for me. But it's uh, not my favorite, in case you've missed it before. I've said it a million times. My favorite movie of all time is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. But Inception is a fantastic movie. One of Nolan's simpler movies. It's not really that mind-bending, um, even though literally the plot of the movie is to bend things with your mind, you know. But uh, it's, it's pretty simple. You can follow everything, get everything on your first go-through, unlike films like The Prestige or uh, maybe Memento that might throw you off a little bit. This is pretty straightforward. And the plot of it is uh, Leonardo DiCaprio plays a thief, so to speak, um, where in the near future, there's this ability to uh, go into other people's minds via their dreams. And now it is a legitimate <laughs> form of crime to steal thoughts from people. You can steal people's passwords, you can steal their personal information, you can steal all sorts of stuff and then sell it. Um, and uh, there is a um, owner of a business who wants to do kind of the opposite of that by getting a competitor to his business to actually be given a thought, given an idea in his dreams. So that's, you know, inception, having the beginning of an idea put into his brain and so they say that it is possible but it's extremely dangerous extremely difficult uh, because you have to go multiple layers deep into um, the dream so a dream within a dream within a dream it's um, been so talked about that the word inception has kind of lost its meaning and the whole dream within a dream thing it's become synonymous with inception where if something is really deep or convoluted or complicated people just say oh it's inception even though like i said it's not really that complicated it's kind of overblown but that's what's become of that word in uh this generation and um it's great uh it's funny that inception has had such an impact on movies whether it's the actual movies or even trailers, it's redefined how trailers are made. If you ever hear a loud boing in a trailer, it's because of Inception. Um, and uh, just the way that people have talked about um, movies and pop culture and everything, it's changed so much. But in more recent years, Inception's kind of for some reason been uh, looked down on, and I don't know why that is. And maybe that's just my personal circle, but it's like, People almost talk about Inception like, yeah, it was okay. It's like, it's kind of like people treat it like it was Avatar or something, where it was great in the moment because of the visual effects, but yeah, now we can leave that behind in its, its time, and that's not the case at all. Um, it's, like I said, not the most complicated or most complex or uh, interesting idea that no one's ever come up with, but it is a great movie. Not perfect, but it is great. Um, honestly, my only flaw with this movie that I can come up with is a nitpick. And somebody, I'm sure, has talked about it before, but um, they don't really explain how they all end up together in the same dream. Because you see people get the IVs in, and then they fall asleep, and then next thing you know, they're all in the same dream together. They don't really explain how that works. Um, to me, that's a nitpick though. That's not something that necessarily needs to be explained. This isn't a science fiction movie. It's more of a fantasy type movie. It's not sci-fi because they don't explain the science and that's fine. It doesn't need to be explained. It's completely entertaining and it's great without knowing how it works exactly. But if you're a big sci-fi buff, you might be frustrated or disappointed by that because they don't explain it and it is a little bit silly, but I don't have a problem with that. I, like I said, I see it as a nitpick. Um, aside from that, this movie is great. You've got a phenomenal cast. Like I already mentioned, Leonardo DiCaprio's in it. It's got Tom Hardy, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Killian Murphy, Ellen Page, Michael Caine, um, Ken Watanabe. It's a fantastic, 
fantastic cast. They all do great. Oh, uh, Marion Cotillard's in it. Her and Leo's chemistry is phenomenal. Uh, there's this scene in it where Leo is talking, trying to talk her out of jumping off uh, out of a window because she's saying we're in a dream right now, even though they were in real life. And she's saying, I want to wake up and how you wake up, one of the ways to wake up is to die. So she's like, I'm just going to kill myself so I can wake up from this reality that I'm trapped in. And he's trying to convince her not to do it but she's uh, too far gone out and she jumps and he screams and it is one of the most powerful emotional moments I've ever seen in film. I get goosebumps every time I see it. Um, it is just phenomenally done. Uh, the editing of it, the way that like it shows her begin to jump and kind of quick cuts away to him and his reaction, it's just phenomenal. I can't get enough of acting like that. It's just so good. And... Um, this movie is full of just awesome moments like that. There's great visual effects um, through the CGI, through pra practical effects. The whole thing looks awesome. And with the cast just being beautifully directed by Nolan, there's just so much to love about this. I don't know why anybody would dislike this movie. There's not really anything to dislike about this movie. Uh, the biggest complaint I've heard is that there's not a whole lot being done despite them being in dreams. Tom Hardy's character even says it himself. He's like, you have to dream a little bit bigger, darling. And then instead of pulling out a machine gun, he pulls out a grenade launcher and that's cool. But um, I do partially agree with they don't do a whole lot to bend the dream. They do have an explanation being that the more you do, the more the dream notices you. It's kind of like the Matrix is if you if you do something ridiculous, the program notices you. This is just an actual dream. Um, it notices you and it wants to get rid of you. It wants to correct the wrong. Um, so that's a reasonable explanation, but there's definitely something more you could have done with it. Um, you could have done more exciting dream scenarios. I didn't really have any problem with it. I thought it was very exciting, um, but uh, I could see once again, if somebody had a complaint about it, that would probably be it. Um, but really, you're just searching for nitpicks at this point. You're reaching. There's not much at all to dislike about this movie. It's so good <laughs> in every way, um, and we haven't even gone to the ending yet. And the ending is... <sighs> I think the best ending I've ever seen in a film. Now that's debatable because uh, obviously you've got other great uh, endings of all time to talk about. You can bring up Psycho where you've got the inner monologue at the end. Uh, if you haven't seen that, I'm not going to spoil anything. But if, you, if you've if you never seen that, it's just got a phenomenal ending. Uh, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, Citizen Kane's got a phenomenal ending. Um, there's tons of great endings out there, but I would definitely put Inception up there as one of the greatest endings of all time. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about, of course, the spinning top. Does it fall over? Does it keep going? We don't know. And that's fine. But, but, I personally believe that it does fall over based on some different theories that people have come up with. I didn't come up with this theory. I don't want to take credit for it. Um, but there is a theory that Whenever he's in a dream, Leonardo DiCaprio's in a dream, he has his wedding ring on because in his dream, Mal is still alive, so he's therefore still married. Whenever he's awake, he doesn't have the wedding ring on because he's aware that she's dead and he's no longer married to her. So um, according to that theory, at the end of the movie, he's not wearing the wedding ring and therefore he is awake. Um, but I've heard plenty of people coming against that theory and having different theories like why aren't the kids any older and different things like that so you kind of just have to decide for yourself what you want to believe um, and you can try and figure it out but there might not even be a definitive ending that Nolan actually had in mind he probably did considering it's Nolan and he's very intelligent but maybe not you don't know so it's it's such a great ending it's such a phenomenal brilliant ending because it it leaves you so open to interpretation while simultaneously letting you know it doesn't matter because as most of Nolan's movies go, it's all about perception. And I brought it up in Memento and um, how he's got the, is the world still there when I close my eyes? 
And he goes, yes, so I can close my eyes and it doesn't matter. I can choose to believe what I believe and the world will go on. And this is a similar situation uh, in Inception where we, the audience, wait to see if the top falls down or not, but Leo doesn't. He does not care. At this point, he's said, hey, maybe I'm dreaming, maybe I'm not. I don't want to know because I am choosing to believe that this is my life and I don't care. I do not care. However you want to take that philosophically, if you agree with that, if you don't agree with that, I think that's a great ending because that is a complete character arc and we've seen that growth through um, Leo throughout this movie from being somebody who is so obsessed and so concerned about what's real and what isn't. He gets to the point where he just wants to be happy. He just wants to um, achieve this goal and he's fine if it's fake because he's just willing to accept it what it is. You can say that that's foolish, you can say whatever you want about that, but I think it's a brilliant ending and I think it's just fantastic writing by Nolan. I know it was a passion project he'd been working on for years. He was trying to get funding <laughs> since Insomnia for it. And it finally paid off and he finally was able to make it. And I think it's one of the best movies ever made. But you know, that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. It means a lot. Every like, every share, it really does help me out. So thank you. Bye.